programmers aren't equally good, and that's okay. I'm so excited because this always inevitably leads to the same argument, and I swear the dislike ratio on this video is going to be enormous. And because it's always the same thing, which is one, there exists talent. Okay, I hate to tell you this. If this is you doing something, you have a multiplier in front of you doing something. That multiplier is how fast you're going to get good at that thing. Some people are just better at something, at some things. It just, it just happens. It just doesn't matter. I have multiple kids, and some of them are just so much better than others at specific things, and others cannot do what the other ones. It's just like you just see it happen. It's just, it just exists. It's wild. And yet, somehow, that's a controversial and brave take. You know, you've got three or four programmers. I mean, we're not designing it not to scale the bigger teams. Yes. But the, the point being, if you have like three or four programmers and they're all highly productive people, you should be able to make, you know, I don't know what percentage of the software that you hear about in the world, but a large percentage of yes. it. Because a lot of this software really isn't actually that complicated, yeah. especially if you're building on stuff that's come before and all these algorithms have been figured out. You don't have to figure them out. Yes. You just have to type yeah. things in sometimes. And so... Um, you know, this is why you see those things, right? It, do, you, do you remember when Obama, uh, Obamacare's website came out? It was like, I forget the number, but it was astronomical, like $200 million spent. SQL injections being auto-completed, just an absolute shambles of a website. And then like two people in a cafe over the weekend built the same site and better without the SQL injections, just f squealing about the website. And then when you go into it, there's all this research being done where it's like to get any useful information during the Obamacare website debacle, you had to go down six levels or seven levels. There's like this entire podcast where someone tried to figure out what went wrong and it required going down seven levels to find out who did what. It's pretty much money laundering. Yeah, I, I effectively agree with you. Any government project is just actually just money laundering. That's all it is. But I, I think he's right on that is that there's a lot of software that's just not complicated to build in a day or in two days or in 10 days or a couple months if you have the right group of people, depending on the software. Even Twitter itself is simple. The things that I think Jonathan Blow often gets wrong in these situations is he's forgetting the scale aspect. To make Twitter and to make it scale the way Twitter scales is actually a pretty complicated problem. That would actually take a while. And even talented people, it would take a bit to really get that right. Because there is there's a big difference in making something that looks like something modern and making something that also scales the same way as the modern one. And so I, I, I always want to call that out. I don't want to just simply trivialize that because it's easy to make something look like it, but it's really hard to make it scale the same and act the same and be as fault tolerant as the same. And whether or not you like it, Twitter is a pretty impressive piece of software. Whether you like it or not, and no matter how many times it's been down, it's a pretty impressive piece of software. Same with Facebook, same with Instagram, same with all these sites that are doing a bunch of this scaling, same with Netflix. Like it's, it's actually pretty wild how much they get out of it. But the site itself doesn't look as complicated. And a lot of things you also miss on top of this, whenever someone says, oh, I could make that in a small amount of time, you're also forgetting all like the algorithm that goes into it to show you what you want to see. Like that's actually a really complicated algorithm. But I know people are like, I just want to see, uh, you know, tweets from my follow, you know, from people I follow. But they actually don't. Like a lot of times people don't realize they actually like the fact that other parts of their network bleed in because you happen to be in the same group and you're like, oh, I actually did want to see this really cool piece of technology that someone built because I would not have seen it without this weird, you know, like all that other stuff is actually exceptionally hard. So making something, I do think a team of four can make a lot of the world stuff because most of the world stuff isn't complicated. But there's a few things that people inevitably throw in, such as Twitter or any of this stuff. Oh, I could just do it. It's like, no, it's actually, it's, it's a marvel of engineering that it even works. That philosophy is very similar to closure of yeah. sort of a totally different language, different audience <laughs> entirely. Yeah. But also closure has this goal to be help a small number of high skilled programmers be extraordinarily productive. And where they, did he just mention Uncle Bob? Did he just mention Uncle Bob and functional language and Lisp all in the exact? Oh my gosh, this is the greatest. This is the greatest thing ever. How does? What do you think? It's, uh, for some part of me, it feels like Jonathan Blow has to disagree with this, but I don't think he will. It's from a fun. It's from FPCon. Okay, the Holy Trinity, dude. It's so good, dude. It was so good. I love that. 
That was so good. Okay, sorry. Let's go. Productive. And where that comes into play concretely in language design is, for example, you'll talk to somebody about a design of some other language, and you'll see, I don't know, maybe Java, maybe something else, and you ask, like, why is this feature chosen to be this way? And they say, well, if you don't do that, the program is you know, when, screw the, up, right? when the junior programmer comes onto the team, yes. he's going to, like, cause very bad things to yes. happen, and, and it'll be a great deal of damage and whatever. Yeah. And I'm just like... That's fine. That's like defensive, some kind of defensive language design that affects many languages. And th the way that I think about that, it's equivalent. Say you're trying to be a chef. You're trying to be a really good chef, right? But the guy who designs the machines at McDonald's <laughs> comes in and says, no, the way this works is you push the button and it cooks the fries yes. for one minute. Because that way you can hire a, someone from yeah. high school and yeah. they can make all the food. Yeah. And it's like, OK, that's an interesting problem to solve, maybe. But that shouldn't be every programming language, yeah. first of all. And then... Um that's a really good take, by the way. I do, th I do think that that's a, an exceptionally astute observation, which is I can imagine why some languages are... They're just hard because they're not designed for the average person. They're designed for something to be... Yeah, I mean, this is obviously the exact opposite of Go. Go is actually designed for simpletons. But I actually really like writing software in Go. Rust, on the other hand, is not designed for simpletons, okay? You even see it with Zig. Zig has optionals. Optionals are intentionally trying to make your language more safe. It, it, it effectively is putting the rails on this, right? It's like, hey, you actually can't access this thing without syntax. So skill issues. There is something very, very true about this, which is the more, like, allowing a person to have the complete control means by definition they can shoot themselves in the foot in a more amazing way than possible, say, in JavaScript. Because JavaScript, you can't do the same things that you can in C. And so I've just never really thought about that in the sense of designing or creating a language that is intentional, meant for the person who's going to first go deep on understanding and then build something. But I also have this conflicting opinion, which is that's not good. Because Go is a highly productive language, even for very smart people. And so maybe that take altogether isn't true. And I, I kind of go back and forth on this, which is, is it okay to design something for somebody to prevent them shooting themselves in the foot, options being one of them, or should you just always allow the foot shooting because this is going to be for the, for the expert? Oh man, that's such a hard one. I can't, I, I actually, I don't know how to reason about this one properly. For me, it, it, it honestly feels that I'd rather have the language enforce certain things such as null protection. Like all answers, it depends. I, I, I don't know if it depends, right? Like I don't know how you can argue why null protection is a bad thing. That's why I love that idea of Zig where you can actually have allow null and you can have unprotected pointers. Runtime cost, I'm not sure if there's an actual runtime cost. And actually, oh, I mean, of course there's always, there's a tagged union. It has to be, it has to by definition use up more memory. So that's fair, but then you can explicitly opt into the shoot yourself in the foot null. And you can have unprotected pointers. So I like that idea of you get to choose when that exists, right? I, I really like that. I had unprotected pointers. That's how I ended up with three freaking kids. Well, I have four kids and with the same problem. Uh, more pain, more gain. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, this is kind of like just a language conundrum for me. I, I want to say it doesn't depend. Again, I know I've been harping on Zig a lot lately. It's just because it's the language I'm using right now. So it's the, it's the Zig and Go are the ones I'm using right now. So it's like the most in my head. And JavaScript just simply doesn't have any of this available. So I can't talk about that one, which is that Zig allows you to have the optional, but it also allows you to have the could be any null, which is a very awesome language design. Because it's like, oh, you don't want a runtime cost? Here you go. Here's raw dog your own pointers how you want to. Oh, you do want a runtime cost, but for the sake of safety. Okay, sure, it's going to be a tagged union, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to have an extra whatever it is to specify that it is a null. Perfectly fine. But you will in 99% of the cases where you don't care about boomer pointers, this will make everything nice. Else you can go back to boomer pointers. You can go back to your boomer loops with boomer pointers and just enjoy your life. Um, oh, no. Secondly, we should have an awareness that there's just, there's different kinds of programming, right? There's... Just like there's different kinds of driving. Like if you're a Formula One driving driver, you're not Second doing what I do one. to drive here to this hotel. It's a yeah. different thing. With programming, it's also a different thing. And I think we should, um, you know, acknowledge that. Yes. And try <laughs> have to languages for, for high skill people. 
Hold on, let, I'm gonna let him finish this take. Yeah. Who have a lot of experience in industry and yeah. they want the tools. They are the Which, chefs. by the way, as soon as you say something like that, some people get very reactive. Like, are you saying not all programmers are equally good? Yes. But, fact. But Hard that's fact. Not, that doesn't have to be like a conceited thing no, or a I, bragging thing. No, it's just it's, it's an yeah. observation about the world. Exactly. Like, I do, I do agree with that. There's obviously better programmers and worse programmers. But I would say that you should almost slice it a different – you should slice it a different way because I think it makes more sense. Because a bad programmer can become a good programmer. Right, because at one point I was a bad programmer. I was a less skilled programmer. I became a better programmer over time, and so it's it's not like a fixed position. I'm really not convinced of any sort of fixed positioning. There, there, there's no hopelessness. Exactly, they're not hopeless. But what I think makes it probably a better way to say the same thing is that there's languages that are designed like Formula One is designed. It's designed for someone that is going to have to care about every last detail and has the capability to care about every last detail. It's designed for good programmers. And there's languages that are designed for not as good programmers, such as Go. Go is just, which also it shockingly is designed for good programmers because it makes you think about nil all the time. But nonetheless, it's designed to have more wheels. You don't have to manage memory in Go. It just manages it for you. It has garbage collection. It just makes life a lot easier. And so you can still be a good programmer. You can still fall under this category. It's a language designed to make certain aspects of programming really easy, where some are designed for other aspects to be really easy, which makes hard programming. And second, there is always going to be bad programmers. And you know what? There probably does exist a bad programmer who can never become a great programmer, right? I, I, I can never become a great ping pong player. Even if I practice from my very early childhood, all the way up until I grew up. I don't think I could ever become an Olympic ping pong player, no matter how much time or effort and all that, because I'm just like, I just don't have that. I don't have the second component of becoming really great at it, which is that inborn natural talent. I do think some people just have natural talent and they just come out easier. Like I did, if you've ever seen some coding guy, the guy is just a freak. He's just a freak. Like I look up to him as a freak comparatively to me, like his skill ceiling is way bigger than me. He just can learn things at a rate I've just never seen in my life. It's quite wild. Some coding guy. Uh, guy is great. Yeah, yeah. Prime sucks. Oh, absolutely. And so is natural talent in programming basically IQ? No, 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 no. I think it's something more than IQ. Uh, IQ, uh, it's, it's, you know, like just like wisdom and intelligence are different. Wisdom, like I always like to say intelligence is the ability to solve a problem. Wisdom is knowing what problem to solve. I think that's the right thing is I think some people just have whatever that, whatever that thing is, right? The ability to not only solve hard problems, which is the smarts, it's also the ability to know when and how to solve the thing right. A great programmer has that wisdom and has the intelligence to back it up. It's just different. And some people are just good at like, like that's why you see people that somehow build the right product at the right time because they just have this, they, they, they can tell. Or the person that's just really good at fishing, right? There's professional fishers that literally their job is to catch fish. And you have the midwit that comes in and is like, well, actually the sun is shining. It's 82 degrees. The sun's at this theta. We also have this wind speed and we have this depth of water with this murkiness. Therefore, I should probably either use A or B. I should probably use a streamer. And then you have this guy that's paid a ton of money who doesn't have any of that, who just walks in and goes, it's a streamer. It just like just knows, right? It just like there's something like he internalizes all those calculations and doesn't go through the midwit process and goes, I know this is the way uh, this is uh, what we should do. Jordan Peter Fisherman, just don't don't do it. Don't do this to me. Right. Like there's just people that can just do it. like they just there's something else in there that we just don't have. They internalize at. This, this level that's really weird. Yeah, this intuition. I don't know what you call it. Instinct, intuition. As C.S. Lewis says, instinct is just a, a placeholder word for process we don't understand. Uh, midwit, yes, it is It is this midwit thing. So I think that I'm probably more of a midwit programmer than anything else. I might have some proper instincts of knowing how to design software fast and build it in some level of, of quality that can scale decent. But it's just like I'm still also just a midwit. It's, it's just funny to say there's languages that are designed for people who are smart and languages who are designed for people who are dumb because it's not wrong. Go is designed for the bad programmer. 
Zig or Rust or Jai, which I believe is uh, Jonathan Blow's one, or even Closure, as he said, is not designed for that person. And I think that, like that is that is okay. Jayatan, Jayatan seventy five mentioned. No, shut up, Robert Tables. I played tennis when I was a kid. I'm not a good tennis exactly. player. <laughs> I don't want to play Bjorn. We are not or all equally good at all things. Yeah, no, and and on the other yes. hand, if somebody spends. 10 hours a day for 30 years doing something, you expect them to be very yes. good. And this is obvious and natural, yeah. and we shouldn't, like, ignore yes. that culturally. Yeah, I think so. It is weird that that has to be stated. I, don't, I, I, I have never understood this, um, this, this thing where people just, like, hate this idea that some people are talented and some people aren't as talented. I've never understood that dislike because it hurts their feelings. I know, but, but it's just, like... Dog, I'm six feet tall and I have my hands are the same size as my wife, who is who is five foot six. Huge amount of physical variation. How is there no skill variation? Right? Like it would make no sense to think that we are just like giant di like variations between every last person. Like even my brother and I or my sister and I are very, very like varied comparatively, even though we have the same genes. Well, it's not equality. It's, 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 it's equity, right? Wouldn't that be equity? You have the same outcome no matter what. Uh, equality is good. You have, the, you have, you have equal opportunity, but it, well, I guess it, it would even be equality. It would be neither equality nor equity. You have neither the same outcome nor the same beginning. It's really wild. It's, it's not controversial to say that circles uh, in, in circles that uh, actually get things done. I know. No, it, it is helpful to consider. Like, dude, if, if you have absolutely no talent... And it makes you feel like you have to slog through a day in and day out doing chemistry. But you can do physics in your sleep. You should really consider that. Like, you should be like, gosh, this is just so, like, I can just, like, I could just destroy in this topic and be absolutely terrible in this other topic. Maybe I should focus on the one that I can be good at. So that way I can go into it and run further, jump higher, be better. Things become easier. Sure, sure, things become easier, but you should. You should, like, ta talent is a great thing to know about. You should at least know your talents, right? Like, everybody here would say, know what you're good at and what you're bad at, because you should find your talent. And if you can find your talent, it is really good. It's, like, really good if you can. Obviously, uh, I'm good at triggering people. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's actually a talent. Um, uh, a lot of people use talent as an excuse not to work hard. Yeah, but but that doesn't mean talent exists. I, every time, like every time we talk about this, this, the exact same tropes always come up, which is just like, oh yeah, but then you know, it, you know, uh, work beats talent when talent uh, doesn't work hard or whatever it is. I forget what it is, right? And it's just like, yeah, you're right. Of course, nobody's arguing that. But if you can find what you're like, what what you're actually gifted at. And then pour in the hard work. It just, it's just amazing, right? You learn young. Relying on intelligence slash talent means uh, you eventually fall behind. That's, but that's not always true. I mean, that's a danger. Talent is dangerous. Like, anytime someone is really good at something, there is also the opposite and terrifying side of it, right? If you always find, like, every time I meet somebody that is very jovial and happy, I always think they might also have, like, a really angry side, there's this, this, there's this uh, thing that happens where it's like your big, big, the thing that is really great is also your downfall. It's like this thing. So, of course, talent is great, but it can also lead you to become lazy. Johnny Manziel is the greatest example of talent that was so amazing that didn't know how to work hard. For those that don't know, he's this football player that I think grew up in Texas. He got all the way to the NFL not showing up to practice. Like, think about that. That's just something that just, I, like, how, how does that even happen? Johnny Football was mid, but he was great during his time. When he was going up, he did a lot of good stuff. He was dumb. Oh, dude, he was horrible. He was so stupid. But he also was very good. Like, you can't argue. He, like, to say he was mid is, is pretty ridiculous. He was obviously really good. He just didn't know how to work hard. Like, imagine the difference of him if he would have worked hard. Shaq had the worst free throw record in the NBA for years, but still was an all-star. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 dude, his talent was being 7'12". He could touch the hoop without jumping. Dunk. I dunked it. I'm dunking it. Here we go. Dunking it. I'm, oh, I'm going to dunk it again. 
mean, dude, his talent was crazy. Talent was absolutely greatly. Great man theories of human behavior are almost always wrong. The reason individual success stories stand out, uh, it's rare to be a, uh, enough to be an amazing story. Yeah, I, I, I do agree with that. I mean, all those things. But either way, Duncan on Shaq, get it. Uh, kind of to rewind this, I do think it's good to recognize where you're at. But let's take it a step further in kind of that hopeful, hopeful one, which is if you feel like you're not a good programmer, and there does exist these languages and these things in which are for good programmers, why don't you try it out, right? Change your life. If you don't want to be a bad programmer, you can become, like, I think almost anybody, barring any sort of, like, real learning disability, I think most people can become good programmers, if not really good programmers. There's going to be few John Carmacks, granted. There's going to be few people that are going to be there designing the next greatest language. There's going to be few Andrew Kellys, right? They're very unusual programmers. But there's going to be a whole bunch of us that could be much better than we are now by simply practicing. Hey, the name, the name is the primogen.